what's up everybody welcome back to another video review and today i have a chance to bring you my thoughts about the asus stuff nvidia geforce rtx 4070 ti which supposedly was the uh, 12 gigabyte rtx 4080 in the past but got then renamed to the 4070 ti so you might be wondering like if it's a rename and it's uh, a little bit uh, less gigabytes it should be pretty similar in speeds versus the rtx 4080 so that's what we're gonna try and find out in today's video by running all sorts of 4k benchmarks through on the 4070 ti and on the 4080 so if you're interested in that stick around but before i begin you might be wondering well I mean, how big is the price difference, right? And what I found was that the 4070 Ti goes at around 850 bucks to about a thousand, uh, while the 4080 goes around like 1200 to 1300 uh, on average. So there is definitely a pretty decent price gap here to maybe uh, choose the 4070 Ti over the 4080. And uh, yeah, coming to Asus's tough 4070 Ti, how good is that? Well, first of all, uh, taking it out of the package and comparing it uh, to the RTX 4080 and even comparing it to the 7900 XTX from AMD, there is a huge difference in size. Uh, it's like the baby brother of the 4080 and the 7900 XTX, almost half the size, which I actually like if the temperatures uh, stay in a good place and the guard is quiet. And um, yeah, for the top 4070 Ti, we find the usual Asus stuff. Uh, their Axel Deck uh, fan technology that produces more airflow than regular design fans, um, then their still pretty massive heatsink, and all of this combined will work to keep the guard passively cooled when the temperatures drop below 50 degrees Celsius. Fans only start spinning up slowly when the temps go past uh, 55C. Uh, there are also military grade capacitors on this thing, uh, giving the end user a very stable and long lifespan of the card. And interestingly enough, Asus is using an auto extreme assembly process where the entire card's uh, parts are soldered on via a single go around, which supposedly further helps create a more reliable card for the long run. Now, there are also some other neat little stuff like a GPU card holder so it wouldn't sag and um, some small RGB effects, uh, which is nice, uh, but it is barely visible. Uh, finally, it is using the brand new 16-pin PCI Express connector, which I actually love after seeing that the AMD is adding three large PCI Express 8-pin connectors uh, to their 7900 XTX cards. Anyway, coming to the benchmarks finally, right? Uh, how good is this thing versus the RTX 4080? That's what we're gonna find out now. And I'm gonna be using my test rig, which is the Intel Core i9-13900K with the exact uh, specifications I leave in the left corner of the screen. So yeah, uh, you should have an eyesight on the uh, exact test rig uh, at all times. And also before I begin all my gaming benchmarks, I will show you guys uh, the exact uh, graphical settings that I uh, put on in the graphical menu so you can in theory run these exact tests at home and compare right but keeping it short uh, it's max detailing games 4k resolution and if possible no anti-aliasing with ray tracing and DLSS turned on in some games but I'm gonna mention that when I do so so first of all, let's kick things off with 3D marks, right? Uh, the first 3D mark uh, that I ran through was uh, Times by Extreme, and um, yeah, here the 4070 Ti scored 11,216 points, while the 4080 got 14,048 points. Uh, then after that, I went and ran through 3D Mark Port Royale, uh, where the 4070 Ti got 14,186 points, and the RTX 4080 
18,225 points, which means the RTX 4080 is about 20 to 30% faster in 3D marks, um, which is pretty interesting. And if you're wondering, uh, uh, yeah, uh, the 4080 results are the same that I used in the 7900 XTX review, because the 4070 Ti I benchmarked uh, pretty much straight after, so the, ex the exact uh, game uh, patches and the drivers. Now moving on, next up was Assassin's Creed Valhalla with all the graphical details turned to the max and dializing on the lowest setting and the 4070 Ti got an average of 103 frames per second while the RTX 4080 got 124 frames per second. So again, just about 20% performance gain over the 4070 Ti um, on the 4080. Uh, and uh, yeah, moving on to Far Cry 6, uh, again, maximum detail without anti-aliasing, and the 4070 Ti got 91 frames per second, with the 4080 115 frames per second. After which I enabled ray tracing support and checked uh, how these cars would fare 10, right? Uh, well, the 4070 Ti managed 80 frames per second, while the 4080 a flat 100 frames per second. Alright, moving on now to Grand Theft Auto V. All the graphical details to the max, uh, even in the advanced graphical settings, and the fourth and the longest pass uh, of the test, uh, the RTX 4070 Ti got an average of uh, 135.2 frames per second, while the RTX 4080 got 100. 55.5. Next up was the good old classic Counter-Strike Global Offensive, running everything on maximum detail at 4K resolution and in the dust 2 both cars got around 360 to 390 frames per second. I guess mostly because we are bumping into some CPU bottleneck here. But yeah, for CSGO both of these cards were just about the same on 4K resolution. Now, next up was Call of Duty Warzone 2.0. Again, graphics to the max and heading into my benchmarking section, the RTX 4070 Ti managed 97 frames per second, while the RTX 4080 got 116 FPS. So far, um, a pretty similar result overall in each game. The RTX 4080 outperforming the 4070 Ti just about like 20 to 30%. But let's see if things change in something like Cyberpunk 2077. Let's try many different settings here, including frame generation technology. First up was a default run, right? Maximum settings, uh, 4K resolution, no ray tracing and no DLSS. So the RTX 4070 Ti managed 27.9 frames per second, while the RTX 4080 got 36.9. Next, I enabled ray tracing to see, you know, how bad good things really get. Well, the RTX 4070 managed just about 21.2 frames per second like that, while the RTX 4080 28.6. Although, yeah, I wouldn't say 28.6 frames per second is anything to brag about. Next, I decided to enable DLSS um, to see how manageable the frame rate would be 10. Ray tracing turned on, DLSS on ultra performance, and T4070 Ti got 93.4 frames per second, while the RTX 4080 got 111. 0.8 frames per second. That's more like it, uh, the way I would actually play the game. Uh, but let's try to get as much FPS as we can by uh, disabling ray tracing but leaving DLSS on ultra performance. Well, that way the RTX 4070 got an average of 125.1 frames per second and the RTX 4080 149.1 frames per second. Very nice results uh, as you can now fully utilize a high refresh rate monitor here in 4K. But we don't need to stop here. 
NVIDIA's 4000 series cards also come with frame generation DLSS technology. And as Cyberpunk 2077 just recently added this support, well, yeah, let's see what happens if we crank that on as well. So DLSS on ultra performance with frame generation turned on and the RTX 4070 received 146 frames per second while the RTX 4080 managed 190.8 frames per second. Pretty darn crazy. I mean, you can even go further by turning down some graphical settings, but I'll leave that up to you guys. Now coming to the maximum temperatures while I run through all these benchmarks. The tough RTX 4070 Ti never went over 67.8 degrees Celsius. I mean, yeah, this also depends on how good your case is ventilated and uh, my tough GT502 chassis is pretty decently ventilated, so it might be a bit hotter for you or even cooler. In any case, the tough 4070 Ti has incredible cooling capability while still staying very quiet while gaming an amazing cooling solution overall. So there you have it, the ASUS Tough RTX 4070 Ti is a pretty amazing card overall. Although if you ask me, I, I personally save a few hundred bucks and get the RTX 4080 instead. But there's a but here, because uh, the main takeaway in my opinion and why I actually found out why the 4070 Ti is actually useful is because of the size. The 4070 Ti is like a small little baby, a baby that you put in your PC. The 4080 is like a car, you're trying to fit a car into your computer chassis, it just doesn't really work, right? I had to take a big ass grinder and grind out a pretty decent chunk of metal out of my brand spanking new uh, tough GT502 case to even fit the 4080 in it. Well, actually I tried to fit the 7900 XTX, but they are both um, almost the same size. So I would have had the same problem, the same problem with the 4080. So yeah, there are definitely still takeaways like uh, why you should pick the 4070 Ti over the 4080. So my final verdict for the Asus stuff, uh, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 Ti is uh, a 10 out of 10. It's a perfect card, in my opinion. And if we compare it to the RTX 4080, yeah, there's a couple of hundred bucks of uh, price difference, but there's also um, like about 10 to 20, maybe 30% in a few games of uh, performance difference. But yeah, if we compare then the price, it's also like you're paying like a hundred bucks per 10 FPS. So you gotta ask yourself, uh, do you really need to or want to pay that money? And in my opinion, the biggest takeaway and the biggest difference is that the 4070 Ti is actually a manageable size. Overall, the 4070 Ti is a pretty amazing card to get. And uh, yeah, of course you can spend a little bit more to get the 4080, but yeah, it's just, it's it's a it's a bit to be. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon in another video review or something like that. So yeah, if you like the video, leave a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment down below maybe, and perhaps subscribe. Anyway, thanks for watching. Ciao for now.